Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM and we are here today with Austin French. Ooh. Hi Austin, how hey, are you? How are you? Good to be here. Good. Good to see We're excited. Now you have two new projects coming out. We've got a new album and a new book coming yeah. out this fall. Yeah. So you've been busy during COVID. You know, what else are you going to do when you're sitting at home for months um, without playing shows? Now I, I had started writing my record before COVID hit um, and then kind of after it hit, I had all the time in the world to finish it. And um, along that journey, I'd written a song actually with a guy named Matthew West. And um, I, it, the song ended up coming on my project, and it was all about my testimony. And I realized, man, I'm not really put to pen my story yet. And so I kind of started this book process. And yeah, so it's coming out as well. So I never would have thought I would write a book and also uh, release a record in the same year. So, you know, all the time on my hands helped me finish everything. So your first single and the album are both titled Wake Up Sleeper. They Where are. does that come from? So when I was 18, we had uh, this thing called Youth Sunday. And Youth Sunday was a, a time where all the youth took over the church, and uh, and especially in, in the southern cultures where I grew up in Georgia. And so I had led worship. You know, my mom was a worship leader, and that was just kind of what I thought my role would be on Youth Sunday. Well, we drew straws on who had to preach, and I got the short straw. So uh, the first sermon I ever preached was actually called Wake Up Sleeper. I, I was going through the Bible like, Lord, what am I going to teach? How do I teach people? And I found one of, now, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, in the book of Luke, um, where Jesus interrupts the funeral. And uh, that story has always stayed with me. And in that moment, I realized that when Jesus interrupted this boy, uh, this boy's funeral on the way out to town, you know, to be buried in the ground somewhere, Jesus touched this coffin, interrupted the funeral, and told this little boy to get up and breathe again. And he started doing that. And there's so much symbolism in the scripture. Go read it for yourself. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 7. Um, but for us as believers, and, and really as humans, we are born on our way to the grave. Like, our funeral is inevitable, and Jesus is still in the, the you know, business of interrupting funerals today. When he puts his hand on our life, taking everything unclean about us, all of our sin, he pays for it. And he, you know, wipes it away with the blood he put on a cross for us. And he's calling to sleepers today, just like me and you, at least at once, um, had to hear the voice of the Savior say, wake up, it's time to get up. So I wanted to put it into song and um, kind of relive that sermon that I preached when I was 18 uh, that I titled Wake Up Sleeper back then. And um, I'm excited for people to hear it. I hope people feel encouraged, but also challenged. Um, because we're in a world, there's a lot of people sleeping to the fact that there's hope, there's a cure, there's a healer, there's a savior and a redeemer, and his name's Jesus. And maybe God is calling us to share our story about how our funerals have been interrupted to interrupt someone else's. Mm -hmm. I love how you say that this album is autobiographical, but it's also a legacy you want to leave for your children. Yeah. What do you want them to take from that? Honesty. Um, I think. It's easy as parents to want your kids to think that you're like a superhero. Like, I want my kids to look up to me. But really, at the end of the day, I want my kids to know I'm not perfect and that I need Jesus. And this record is honest. This project is, it goes through different moments where I've been exhausted. We have three kids, and there's a song on this project called Rest for Your Soul. And if I've ever needed rest, it's right now um, with a five-year-old, three-year-old, and a nine-month-old baby. And uh, sleep doesn't happen in our house. And so I want, I want them to be able to listen to the legacy of this record and see that it was my life, and it was my honest cry. I'm not writing songs really for anybody else. I'm writing songs that I need to sing, that I need help with in my own prayer, in my own journey. Um, and I, it's amazing that when we do that, God intertwines other people's stories into it. And so maybe one day my kids can be exhausted in the middle of the night with their kids and listen to these songs and hear what their dad was going through. Mm -hmm. Now on this album, you take a little different turn by covering Ooh Child. Yeah. How did that come about? You know, I was trying to find a song that captured my view on this whole COVID-19 season. Um, and it, I stumbled, someone sent me this song, um, uh, an old Motown song. And I grew up on Motown music. My mom was a music teacher. And so we heard all types of music in our house all the time about different things. And um, this Motown song, Ooh Child, um, it, it was the perfect 
description of how I was feeling through this season, knowing that in the most darkest moments, Jesus gives us this light that pushes back darkness. And we have a promise, whether it's today or whether it's eternity, things are going to get brighter. Things are going to be okay. And um, these are the seasons to admit that we need Jesus and hold on tight for the ride. Um, we're not here to solve things. We're here to believe that he's in control of them. And that song kind of just honestly put my, my thoughts into music. And instead of writing another song that does it, uh, I was, might as well just cover it. And someone else wrote it really beautifully back then, and I think it means something special to me now. Yeah. So when can we expect Jesus Can, your new book? October is when it comes back from the printers, and so it's going to be coming out all over the place. And yeah, it blows my mind. I never thought I'd be an author. I never thought I'd be um, someone you know that that would write a book. But I think God has really shown me through this whole season that everyone has a story, and every story is worth telling. Um, who knows what God's going to use in these stories? Hopefully, to help other people realize who Jesus is. Now, as a songwriter, yeah. what is your favorite lyric or song you've ever written? Oh, so I have a song called Why God. Mm -hmm. um, probably Why God and then a song called Jesus Can, which is off my new record. Um, both of those songs are pretty high up on the list of songs for me. They're just probably the most honest songs I've mm -hmm. written. Very vulnerable, um, didn't hold any punches, really let people into what was going on in my head and my heart. Um, Why God, the very first line is, why God do people have to die? Mm -hmm. Who hasn't asked that question or who won't ask that question? Right. Um, maybe in the COVID-19 season, someone's asking that question right now. And I, I think with all my music, I pray it gives people permission to feel, mm -hmm. um, permission to, to hold on to Jesus in the midst of the craziness that we're surrounded by, and to realize that God doesn't want our best performance of perfection. He wants our honesty, because that's where we meet, we meet him the most. Mm -hmm. Um, so why God does that and Jesus can tells my story in probably the most honest way I've ever been able to put it. Yeah. So flip that question around. Okay. Song or lyric you wish you had have written? Had written? Mm -hmm. Oh man, the song that I wish I had written. Um, yeah, so it's kind of an easy one. Um, there is a song, it's a worship song. I'm trying to think of the title, um, but the chorus goes, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Um, so simple, right? But it, it is so beautiful and so true. And if there was one thing I've been singing over my life lately is that, mm -hmm. is that, man, as dark as it feels, Jesus makes the darkness tremble, like shake in mm -hmm. its boots because... Uh, light is the most effective in darkness. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful song. I think it's by a group called Mosaic. And um, it was a big song for me and my family. Yeah. So as we wrap up our interview, is there a message of hope that you want to leave for the CCM viewer? Absolutely. Um, in this crazy season of where fear seems to be the hot commodity, um, we have to remember where our hope comes from. If our hope came from a uh, vaccine, or if our hope came from uh, a political figure, or if our hope came from our job, a lot of us are probably losing hope right now. Um, but thankfully, we have a hope in Jesus, who died on a cross, was put in a grave for three days, and beat death. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest news you will ever hear, and that was the greatest news you can ever believe in. And so that was what I would say is combat combating fear would be the gospel. Mm -hmm. So don't take the gospel for granted. Don't live in fear. God promises to be enough for us. He gives us our daily bread. So don't try to figure out the future. Just thank God for the gift of today. Austin, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us oh, today. This was great. And everyone, make sure to go listen to the new album, read the new book. Um, new album is Wake Up Sleeper. Book is Jesus Can. Austin, thanks so much. Can't wait to read or and listen to the whole new there project. There you go. Thank you.